chicken! <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> Lovely! Reiteratively, that's once again. <laughs> Preliminarily promoting prolongation of your plaudits <laughs> for aquatic inconsequentialities <laughs> from absolutely inexhaustible the Players Theatre! <laughs> of Terpsichorean simultaneity. <laughs> Dancing together. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bill Drysdale and Miss Chrissy Cartwright. <laughs>
of rusticity. We ask for your overwhelming warmth of welcome for the newest newcomer to our program, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jacqueline Clark! <laughs> Could she be nippy now? I'm just as happy as a girl can be. Upon my word, it's true. I'm so very happy that I don't know which or what I'd be going to do. I'm in love and just engaged to a man who plows their seas. He fishes for a living, but he fished last night. On land, and he caught me. <laughs> and he calls me his own grace, darling. He says I am his pet. I found her place within his soul. That is no cod you bet. When he asks me, do I love him? I answer, <laughs> ooh, not our. <laughs> Apocalyptical. Oh. That's out of the Bible. <laughs> Arcana from Professor Ali Ben Zimbali. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to do some magic that will astound and mystify your It gets better. In all seriousness, ladies and gentlemen, I have here a magic cabinet costing thousands of pounds. I'm going to take two gentlemen from this very audience, place them inside the box and make them disappear. Impossible, you might think. Before this, 
I'd require two volunteers, Mr. Sachs. Could you uh, find me any two gentlemen yeah. from the audience, please? Well, two Don't be shy. Gentlemen over there. Any two gentlemen, just come up Ready. on the stage. Willie. Thank you. Oh, we've Willie. got two Willie. there. Yes. Very kind. Yes. Would yes. you give them a round of applause? Yes. 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 Thank you. I, I have here two gentlemen that I can assure. Hi. Excuse me, is this yours? Yes. Yes, so well, don't give it to me, will you? Right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right now, just examine the cabinet to make sure there are no trap doors or switches. That's close enough, son. Right now. <laughs> I have here one box to show the ladies and gentlemen that it is not on a trap door. Could I have it a little further over to the centre, please? Thank you. Now we will. <laughs> what are you doing? He let me down the stairs, and me. Where's he gone? Oi! Oi! Look, I don't want it down there, do I? I'm, I'm... Is this yours? Yeah. Well, keep hold of it. Don't give it to me. <laughs> now take the cabinet to the centre. Thank you. Just the centre. Right now. Whoa! 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 What's the matter? <laughs> Are you on the tablets or something? What's the matter? <laughs> Get out of the way. I'll do it myself. There we are. Whoa! Right, now, here we have the cabinet in the centre. A little further down, please. So that... Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> God. Move up, I'll be with you in a minute, sir. <laughs> Don't want it over there. Right, finally, here we have the cabinet right in the centre. <laughs> aye, 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 aye. Did you touch that cabinet? Well, who did, then? Could you kindly not touch the box? Now, I'll ask that you... Uh... What's the matter with you? I've lost my stick. <laughs> I mean, you come up here and you expect me. <laughs> this yours? Yeah. Right in the life out that lady there. Now, take... <laughs> I'll show you the cabinet. It's absolutely genuine. One solid mahogany cabinet. You will notice, by the way, I was tapping that box. There was no. You. I won't bother with him, I'll take this... Where's he gone? I will take this gentleman here. I, will, I, I won't bother with those two. I'll show you the cabinet. It's absolutely and positively empty. But I'll get out of it. You're spoiling the whole trick. Now get out of it. So sorry about this. Come here, you. You're the troublemaker here now. Come here. Come here when I'm talking. Come here when I'm talking. Aha! Run up into that. Just put the side on, will you, please? There we are. Right, I'll put the front on. Now, I'll pick this part up. Now, please. Uh, you're standing on the... That's the thing, get it. <laughs> right, now, I'll put the front up. And I'll... 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 <laughs> Is that you? No. I'm watching you, yeah. I'll pick the front up. And I'll place the front. Here, fella, fella. Fella! <laughs> You have a bit of sense, gentlemen. Right now, I'll pick the front up. Place the front on the box like that. I'll show you the camera save all the way round. Here's one side. Here's the front. so cruel <laughs> as to ask for more. The epicenter, I need hardly tell you of that panic, pandemonium, was Mr. Brian Burden. And now, inflammatorily flirtatious femininity, infallibly fascinating frivolity, Miss Stephanie Voss! <laughs> While strolling through the park one day In the merry, merry month of May 
I was taken by surprise by a pair of roguish eyes. In a moment, my heart was stole away. A smile was all he gave to me. But I felt as happy as I could be. He raised his hat, and as he passed, he did remark, I never shall forget the charmer that I met. That happy day was strolling through the park. But I thought no more about him, for I had other beaux. Until some three weeks later, through the park, I chanced to go on a sunny Sunday morning in the middle of the month of June. Fatigued with walking in the heat, I sought the shade of an arbor sweet, for I felt that I was fit to swoon. I found a place. Seeming fair, but a oh, disgrace, a man was there. On a sunny Sunday morning, in the middle of the month of June, he wailed me so eagerly, entreating me, was I free to in the afternoon, I asked the man, what did he mean? And then began that fateful scene. <laughs> On a sunny Sunday morning, in the middle of the month of June, and held me tight. I fought him off with all my might. But a lady weakens all too soon. This fly at length was in his web. I felt my strength Beauty everywhere. Yay! Introducing Mr. Peter Reed. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Good evening. Travellers all complain who went back home again from across the main that though they might obtain ruby. 
rubies, diamonds and pearls They were always short of girls And they'll tell you how they long to gaze on sweet peroxide curls But those tales about no girls are Tommy Rot It's to keep you lot at home, I'll tell you what There are nice girls everywhere There are nice girls everywhere from Peru to Timbuktu, there's a girl for me and a girl for you. From the mountains of Piccadilly to the wilds of Leicester Square. Search every land up the pole or down the strand, there are nice girls everywhere. I've been round the map and I say a chap can easily set his cap at any maiden that takes his fancy anywhere tall or short or dark or fair if he'll only serenade her in a manner debonair and can tell her in her language of her charms then he'll find a way to get into her arms in germany for instance the girls all think it's grand if you sing a serenade learnt from a waltzing german band Ich lieb mein blond Fräulein Bertha, she is meine kleine Frankfurter, meine Schicksal, she is such delight. In fact, she's real Gemütlichkeit. We waltz and waltz the whole night long, the waltz music goes on. But my Bertha never halts, eating, drinking, always waltz. Yeah, my Bertha does everything in waltz time. You know, it's very disturbing when you are loving a girl who does everything to the rhythm of the waltz. <laughs> eating, um, chong, chong, um, chong, chong, um, drinking, um, kong, kong, um, kong, talking even. Guten Morgen, how are you? I am fine, thank you. It is a nice day today. Jawohl! And some activities become virtually impossible. <laughs> ja, meine Bertha does everything in Wolfsburg. Jawohl. In Spain, each senorita's flashing eye was turned my way when I sang them strange flamenco songs in accents wild and gay. Good evening. <laughs> I would like to sing for you. Where you do a flamenco song that I sing to this girl in Spain? I tell her my name is Juan. She's not impressed. She say, when you have seen Juan, you have seen them all. <laughs> Very beautiful flamenco is called the Cantar de Abuelo, the song of the grandfather, but a very old man. Sometimes this is also called Retribution, because it's swift and terrible. It's a very beautiful song, the Cantar de Abuelo. Senor, I know you. Mi And stay there. Mi cantar.
grandfather had a beard, the longest in the world. He grew right down below his knees. It was long and gray and curled. One day we shaved the beard right off and saw a sight bizarre. For when the beard had disappeared, we found it was Grandma. Velocitous, virtuosity, invincible in ambidextrous, circumrotatory, projectiles in tangential trajectory. Hand, foot, and mouth. <laughs> Juggling. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Valente! Valente! <laughs>
what I call real spit and polish. <laughs> In inimitably lugubrious lucubrations illumine the immeasurably melancholic meanderings of none other than the one and only Mr. Les Dawson! <laughs> Thank you for your applause. You have impeccable taste. <laughs> However, the warmth of your welcome has plunged me into a somewhat retrospective mood. May I have a little sombre music, please? <laughs> what a wonderful violinist. He can play till the cows come home. <laughs> and it sounds as though they've arrived. <laughs> Some years ago, ladies and gentlemen, I went through a traumatic period in my life. I teetered on the very abyss of total despair. Dame Fortune had deserted me. I was so unlucky, I bought some bananas once and when I peeled them, they were empty. Yes. I remember once I backed a horse in the Grand National and it fell in the paddock. And then the wife, she'd had enough. She, she ran off with the fella next door and I did miss him. <laughs> I became a coward. I fled the concrete carnival we call city. And I sought sanctuary in the country. I remember that I wandered through a valley of timeless serenity. Heather-clad hills and windripple meadows stretched in languor towards a forest of stately elms, but in whose beckoning greenery feathered choristers trilled on high in a cacophony of praise to the ultimate architect. <laughs> Darting minnows in a chuckling brook escorted me to an old Tudor cottage that knelt by the side of a spilling orchard. 
The cottage had a garden of wondrous beauty to behold. Strutting tulips and wild violets, highly scented honeysuckle and trailing jasmine, that jostled in a confused riot of colour towards an herbaceous border. <laughs> when I spied an elderly lady in a faded velvet dress, a faded velvet dress who was stooped, tending to a rain-bruised marigold, <laughs> I doffed my cap in the manner born and said, Madam, what is the secret of your wonderful garden? She looked at me with a face that was the colour of the autumn sky and said very simply, Arse muck. <laughs> things have improved since then. In fact, my home life is now marvellous. This morning, in fact, the wife gave me breakfast in bed. It slid <laughs> off the plate when she threw it. <laughs> I didn't mind. I found there was something strangely erotic about a grilled kipper on quilt. <laughs> I know why she was annoyed. I'd spill hot cocoa down the front of a nightdress. <laughs> Serves me right for wearing it. <laughs> She was crouched in the doorway, bristling like a frustrated warthog. <laughs> she had a towel round her head and she had a mud pack on her face. She looked like a bilious Gunga Din. <laughs> I don't know why she bothers, because if beauty's skin deep, the wife's going through life inside out. <laughs> She undressed in the night without drawing the bedroom curtains and a peeping tom across the road gave himself up. 